Yeah. What you doing watching this stupid film? Don't you want to have fun playing Sega? Sega? Sega! Sega. Unlock your mind. Sega! Yeah. All right, guys. Yeah. It's, uh, we're doing another it's Sega Geek live, live stream, I guess. Even though we're not talking about Sega, we're going to be talking about weird Japanese games. Right? Yeah. Fucking, fucking, like, like, like what? Like, I don't even know. Well, I don't even know. <clears throat> weird Japanese games you probably never heard of. Right? But mm -hmm. maybe, maybe you heard them. You might have heard of them. You might have heard of them. Right? Uh, but, but, but they, but you probably never played them, because they were never released here in the U.S., right? Right, so, so, let, let's take a look at, uh, what we got here, right? The first yep. thing we got is, a, a cassette vision thing, right? The Epoch cassette vision. Epoch cassette vision, which was, uh, this is like, they're not exactly in, 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 in chronological order, right? Oh, yeah, here, go full screen with that so we can see that. Yeah. Yashina. Yashina. Now, I, I might make fun of the way they talk a little bit. Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, look at that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What's happening? All these games. Oh, God, some Japanese guys. What's happening? Oh, they're dancing around. What's happening? Oh, my God. This what, what was go. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looks like... It looks like a, one of those Pong consoles AVGN reviewed. Those look like packs of cigarettes is what they look like. Right? Don't yeah. they? <laughs> I mean, yeah, they do. They, 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 I guess they're cassettes. It's some kind of cassette, and I guess maybe they're inside of a a case. I guess maybe it's a that's weird on looking thing, right? Maybe that's on purpose. Didn't doesn't Japan have like a really high level of smokers? At the time, I guarantee they did. Right? They were nervous about somebody dropping another bomb on them. Right? <laughs> Uh, but but seriously, so this is a Pong console. You see back there, there's only knobs. It, that's all we got. It's just knobs as far as controls go on these things. Um, they are... Hey, we already got people watching. Hey, yeah, we're, we are looking at Japanese consoles that were never released here in the U.S. And what, what listing, the uh, the cassette vision, which has multiple cassettes that, that swap out. This actually predates... Um, like, well, at least, at least the Nintendo. The, the, this is probably Atari time. Let's you know see if I mean? it has a 1981. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. De definitely before Atari. Uh, definitely after Atari. Right. After Atari, before, this would be in the middle of the video game crash, wouldn't it? Right, over here in the U.S. Uh, about the time... Atari and Intellivision and ColecoVision and just too many damn machines on the market. Nobody knew what, what to make heads or tails of it. Kind of, you know, it just kind of blew up. Also metric fuck tons of really, really bad, not fun games that you had really no way of researching before you bought. Right, because Atari, Nintendo was the first to offer a lockout chip because anybody could make a game for Atari put the Atari logo on there, say, hey, Atari, it's an Atari game. And Atari was like, ruined their reputation. Ruined their reputation. Yep, because it led to games like beat em and eat em and... Uh, they were like, that's Atari. And it's like, um... What's the game where you rape a Native American woman? <laughs> the, Custer's uh, Revenge. Custer's Revenge, that's yeah. right. whole purpose and, of yeah. the game is rape. Yeah, it's fantastic. That, that would be Custer's Revenge, I see. Right. Oh, hey, in the chat, Teddy and other guy. That's right. That's right. Yeah, other guy. <laughs> That's my name, other guy. Introduce yourself. 
tell everybody tell everybody how awesome you are. Come on. Well, I'm RKN, and Teddy keeps me in a basement to watch videos of things I don't want to watch. Because he can read stuff like that. What's that say right there in the red? What's that say? You could, you could translate that, right? I imagine it says Epoch Cassette Vision. See, what? And, 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 and you, and you, <laughs> I can't. What the fuck are you talking about? So, I can't obviously, read that's what it says. Obviously, that's what it says. Come on. I, I can't read fucking Japanese. <laughs> I can't even kind of read Japanese. Yeah. I tried learning when I was a teenager, and I was like, oh my god, this is like trying to learn to read fucking hieroglyphics. Yeah. I can't I, speak I, I know, Japanese right? Either. So this, this is going to be a little awkward. We're going to be watching these videos, and we're going to be watching them kind of slow, trying to break them down because, you know, we're not going to be able to understand yeah, what this we're going to have, and, we're going and to have very to, fast. We're going to have they, to discern everything we're seeing. Now, I don't know if you've seen many Japanese commercials, but they break down to 15 seconds. Mm. Japanese commercials are 15 seconds. That's the way they do them. Hey, man. They're really Jap fast. The Japanese believe in fucking efficiency, man. They do. They, they do. strongly believe in efficiency. So, I mean, I mean, there are not. So, so these some of these videos are like 45 seconds, but that's like that's like three commercials. So we got we're going to we're going to have to. Maybe slow these down and pay attention to what's going on. Check this up, turn right. it on, and see if we can actually get a good shot of... Okay, so it's it's like an 8-track tape. Familiar games, but like... It Familiar, says like, like that's football and baseball, right? I recognize this stuff... <clears throat> I don't understand. He plays some of these with just knobs, though. These are more sophisticated than just Pong, right? That's very much Space Invaders. That was Pong. Maybe we have Space Invaders and some other stuff. But, you know, this is very early, um, you know, home console games with, with, you know, swappable cartridges. Made in Japan. Never fucking got this here in the U.S. The Epoch Cassette Vision. But cassettes suggest that it's something that has, like, a tape deck in it, which means, by judging by the way we're seeing them plugged into the console... No, I, they're just cartridges, I guess. Right. Oh. I, I was going right? to say, they, well, there are computer games that are on audio... Well, not they are. audio well, yeah, cassettes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, You're saying more like maybe a like a 8-track? Yeah. Kind of Could be. Now, that being said, as much of a computer nerd as I am, I have absolutely no idea how those work. Yeah, me neither. But they're trying to sell it to us with Japanese pervert businessmen. <laughs> Look at those guys. Which one of them is the biggest pervert, you think? I think hey, it's the guy with the glasses. Synchronized guys. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Synchronize. I think the one on the left is probably the pervert. The guy on the left is actually got the guy in the middle's hand. He's got his hand on the guy in the middle's balls. <clears throat> yeah, and the guy on the right is trying to signal it to us with that look. Yes, that's what he's, he's like, trying to tell us. Help, help us, help us. Help us, please. He's like that soldier who like blinked the Morse code for torture in that one interview. <laughs> but yeah, the epoch, and this is right, right, okay. What's this here? Just oh, oh, oh okay. This, What's this, this is going to be a more informative video about it. Uh, Did you know the so. Nintendo okay. family computer wasn't the first <coughs> system to be sold in Japan? I did. Well, it's not. Even though the history and worldview of gaming has been written around July 15, 1983, and the success of Nintendo, who, to their credit, took over the industry and smoothed it out and kept things in order, but the way that they saw fit, there was a piece of hardware before that that should get the credit as the first popular mainstream console. But it wasn't, though. They're really yeah, back in the pre there's not that many games for this thing. gaming world the cassette vision made by epic was the market leader oh epic and in epoch epoch i i was saying epoch epoch 
Epic. Yeah. More like epic. It's a weird way to spell it. Tempo yeah. Actually, in a rivalry as heated as any. Wait, wait. What the fuck were those guys doing? Market leader. Epic and Nintendo were actually <laughs> in a rivalry. Yeah, those are the same guys. War, I know. Around, yeah. And in the and there was their sales. Whoa, what was that? Or present. And in the 70s and 80s? <laughs> like a funky, funky, weird version of Pac Man. Yeah, Pac Man would like. Constantly like, one upping each other. That's back when one up meant something else. Epic started operations in Japan in 1958, producing toys and mechanical. Oh, that looks fun. That's pretty damn cool. Epic yeah. took the emerging market of handheld LCD games, releasing oh. the first original Japanese. Yeah, it didn't do that. In 1975, and from there, becoming the most popular maker. In the 1970s, okay. Epic also got in on the home pong clone craze. Someone in the chat translate what 8,800 yen is, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> even before, 600 to Japan for a little while. They also Epoch instead of Epic. Well. On July 30th, 1981, Epic debuted wow. the set vision for a receptive Japanese audience. The sticker price was 13,500 yen. About $50 in 1981. About $50. Oh. Not a lot of money for a country in an economic boom. Because well, that was 13,300 yen though. Like, I don't know. How, I I don't understand how yen works. I don't know the conversion. It really is a product of its time, an evolutionary link in the chain from a home pong to what we know today. There are a lot. Yeah, of look at that thing. Oh, there, it there. Pause there on that thing. Yeah. yeah. And it is pretty much some kind of pong machine. Very basic controls. You got two sets of knobs, so each player could could play an etch a sketch kind of wow thing. this might right. be the birth this might be the birth of the start and select button right here yeah well i mean i mean there was there was a start and select on the atari which predates this and had better controls but it, it, it initially also had paddles that you just what, what are those would you move them like controllers maybe i don't know probably I don't know, but it's got two buttons, two dials, and some sort of switch, but I can't tell what it says. Oh, they are doing conversion in the chat for you, by the way. I mean, it comes to about 6530 mm. or 6550. Look at that. Look at that. We got guys in the, in the chat doing conversion for us. Thank That's you. That's great, guys. I, I also want to let you know that late, tonight, we, uh, if, you want a, uh, if you want a private show, just let us know. We're both available for private shows. What do you mean a private show? <laughs> well, it's fine. If anybody wants a private show, just let us know. I'm not putting nipple clamps on for anybody. No? You don't want to no. put nipple clamps? No? You don't want to put the lipple, 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 lipple well, clamps? Well, maybe if they pay me. Nipple clamps. If you private pay me, pay me clamps. and I'll put nipple clamps on. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. Private pay, shows. Pay me lots, and I'll put really mean <laughs> nipple clamps on. <laughs> and the controls are built in. The controls are a little odd, as they have buttons and dials. This is real old, though, man. Differently with each game. This is a real old machine. You know what I mean? Look at the. What, you, you can tell, tell it's really old because the really old stuff are knobs and switches. I almost the wonder if that switches, says laser. Right? Does that maybe say laser? Lazy. That'd be cool if it said lazy. L right there in the middle. Something so ER2. There, see? Right there in the middle of that old school switch. Click, click, click. And yeah. then knobs. We just turn them. That is in, in, indicative of like very old technology. Switches yeah. and knobs. You just don't see switches and knobs. On the new consoles, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that was that. <laughs> that was something that got brought up when that new Star Trek show, uh, Strange New Worlds. Yeah, I don't know what the new sh show is. What's the new show? Apparently, it's the most Star Trekky show in modern Star Trek, aside from the Orville, which doesn't really count. But uh, I think people counts. were at people were asking, like, you know. Well, what's the bridge of the Enterprise? 
it's not even the Enterprise A. It's just the Enterprise. They're like, well, what's that going to look like? Because the original one was all buttons, knobs, switches, and flashing lights. Well, the J.J. Abrams one was all like uh, uh, lens flays. Max made of nothing but lens flays. It was just a hospital set with lens flays. Like, ah, oh, I can't see anything. There's so many lens flays. It did really kind of look like a like major surgery room when you go into like when you go in for like really serious surgery. Yeah, I re- like I just when I got my back surgery, the last thing I remember saying was, "Wow, this is a really cool room." And then I woke up and the surgery was over. Right, right, right. But 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 the bridge on the J.J. Abrams Star Trek is all really bright. It's really white. There's a big screen, but then there's all these numerous that like the screens that are clear that we're never going to use, by the way. We're never going to use these screens that are clear with people, especially with something like behind it. With this stuff going on, it kind of interferes with what you're seeing through the screen. Yeah, I've never understood the sci-fi concept of in the future, we'll all have semi-transparent st- screens that will be distracting as fuck because of the shit behind it. Right, touch screens. They're like right in front of us. If we put our hands up and touch like that. It's just that are transparent. You see it in sci-fi movies all the time. I don't get it. Like, uh, and that's not even what like Minority Report was doing. He was doing something else. He had like, she was doing something else entirely. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's that's not the same thing. But everybody like, Star Trek's getting into it too. It's just the, the most recent Star Trek is the most generic Star Trek. Oh, it really God. is. It, yeah. it seems to be borrowing from from the stupidest stuff, including like the reboot of uh, of the uh, 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 Lost in Space. The reboot of Lost in Space had a big impact on the J.J. Abrams reboot of Star Trek. Right? Everything has this ergonomic feel, you know? And if anybody is listening and is like, oh, I liked Lost in Space, the show, I should see that movie. You just save yourself the trouble and don't. Yeah, yeah. It's got Gary Oldman in it from, from you know, from everything. For pretty Get, much everything. Giving possibly the worst performance of his career. He's 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 not bad. It's just it's just to the service of what? Besides, okay, okay, twist the twist ending is, is ruined by the uh, the toy line, which reveals that um Dr. Smith becomes a giant spider monster, right? Spiders. <laughs> it's so the stupid. pain. The pain. <laughs> And it also, uh, I believe it ruined the rebuild of Robot. Uh, well, he starts off looking like, like some kind of robot football play, right? And then that gets broken off. And underneath, he looks a little more like our classic Robbie the Robot. Oh, I thought it was the other way around that he started out looking like that and the kid, like, rebuilt him into the big death robot. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Starts off looking like that. And he's remote controlled, for the most uh, part. Then after that, he kind of give. After that, he kind of gives him the ability to auto control himself, and he becomes a robot. But initially, he's just a robot. The kid is going into the spaceship that's you know that that's been derelict for a while with his family as a remote controlled robot. He's back at the thing, and he's like. You know Can I mean? we at least say it's William Hurt's worst performance? It, that's hard to say, because I his love worst you, performance is, just, is stiff as hell. It might be him as the dad in Doom. I love you, wife. Dune. Yeah, oh, in the yeah, sci-fi he... channel, Dune, he is oh. just this stiff, like... Mm. I don't like William Hurt. Mm. You've told me. Uh, am I getting the name right? I'm not mixing him up with the other guy, am I? John Hurt? John okay. Hurt. Is John Hurt is the guy from who? John Hurt was Hurt in Alien. <laughs> yes. Okay. So William Hurt. William I don't Hurt like, I don't is from like Altered him. States. But you according see, altered to States, you. States, altered was, States is a good movie. I was going to say, according to you, there's a William Hurt movie I need to see that might change my opinion of him. All third states for you. Where's, guys in chat, what's the good William Hurt movie? Children of a Lesser God? The Big Chill? 
doesn't have much going on oh, inside. Yeah. 11 games were released between... Ooh, okay. 11, 11 games. games. See, see, that's that almost as many as they showed in the commercial. 11 games, Yosaku, Baseball, Galaxian, Big Sports, Juni, Battle Vader, Galaxian, Monster, that's, New yeah. Baseball, Monster Mansion, Astro... Did you say Big Pack Monster? Monster? I don't Is know, it? but I'm seeing a lot of games that are like other games, but not. Yeah. 1981 and Okay, let's see these game titles. Here. Like this looks like asteroids. Yeah, because the balls get smaller, right? Yeah. And, and this is Pong, I guess. It's a little different. Games. Yosaku, baseball, Galaxian, big sports, Juni, Battle Vader. That's like Battle Vader. Right? That's... Might be Space Invaders with another title, Battle Vader. But it's they little... said Galaxian. They actually it's... said Galaxian. It's a little different than Space Invaders, though, because right. you knock them back first. Yeah, it's what it looks like, but it has this. It still Pack has Pack the. Uh, uh, the what is I'm saying? gonna I'm gonna guess this is Haunted Mansion, or whatever oh, you just said. I'll back it up. Well, yeah. Big Sports, Juni, Battle Vader, Pack Pack Monster, New Baseball. Pack Pack Monster. Okay, so that might Pack be Pack sick. Monster, right? Yeah. So, so the creatures that we see as space invaders, they see as monsters because and this is a Japanese thing that the monsters in Pac-Man are monsters like <laughs> the monsters in Space Invaders, and the monsters we see here, because the Japanese believe in shape-shifting creatures. Lots of them. Pokemons and stuff are shape-shifting creatures. They're not really animals. They're some kind of spirit or something. Oh, my God, dude. I know you don't know much about Pokemon, but there are so fucking many Pokemon that are based, like, straight out of Japanese mythology. Right, and, and that permeates these early video games. That's why the ghosts in Pac-Man are not ghosts. There's lots right? of little things from Japan that permeate into the games, like... The the uh, the murder hornets, those giant hornets we were supposed to all be killed by two years ago. Digimon, some says and shit. Yep. Those Monster appear, Rancher. I love Monster Rancher. Anybody who doesn't know, they made a remaster of Monster Rancher 1 and 2, released it on Steam. It's totally worth the price. You get access to the monsters that were available only in Japan, and you get access to the monsters that were available only in America, and you get access to monsters that you literally could not acquire because there's a monster in Monster Rancher called Moo. Just Moo. He's like He's the big bad from the anime. Well, you got your monsters in Monster Rancher by putting a CD in. And it would read something on the disc and they'll tell you, okay, put the game disc back in and we'll see if you get a monster or not. The only way to get Moo was <laughs> one printing of, Moo. I believe, yes, Moo. It's <laughs> Moo? a big, Moo, M-O-O, -O. Moo. Moo. Um, it's a big fucking fuck all dragon thing. The only way you could get Moo was from one printing of either a Beck or a Moby album. I can't remember. But if you didn't have that, that one printing of it, by the way, you couldn't just have that album. You had to have a specific printing of it. If you didn't have it, you couldn't get Moo. In the Japanese version, they gave you items that would let you get him, but they didn't include those in the American release. I think they did in the re-release, though. Monster Mansion, Astro yeah. Command, Monster Block, and Elevator Panic carried... Holy shit, look at his spaz-out fucking baseball bat. Did you see that? No. Astro Command, Monster Block, <laughs> Uh, Probably because the control is just you spin that fucking... Nintendo dropped the thing, right? computer in July. The ball I mean, the, it starts spinning that little fucking twisty thing. It could have been that. It could have been that they were getting this off a malfunctioning unit because those old analog controllers would get real finicky after a while. Yeah. By 1983, and that was pretty much it for the Cassette Vision. So Epic released a redesigned Cassette Vision Junior for the time being. Mm. Back to the drawing board. Huh? 
try and beat there you go that's a different look champion. that's a different they look came back in 1984 with super cassette vision Super Next cassette the vision computer. with Whoa. the better looking graphics. Major there you go. graphical improvement. Holy Ooh. shit. Super cassette vision. That looks pretty good for the time. Yeah, it does. Specs that match now the that seems to be competing with what Nintendo was doing. That Did looks like July 7th, that last one looked like a Nintendo game. 15, oh my god. Wait. Four. Wait. It, debuted on it does. That one looks like Kung Fu. Looks like Kung Fu. And that one has controllers. It does. And look at those cartridges. These are different looking cartridges. Mm -hmm. These cartridges look different. These cartridges look cooler. They look better. I like the whole look of this thing. I like this. I like that futuristic look it's got. Yeah. It doesn't have that. It doesn't have the weird wood thing that we put on all our consoles. And the multicolored cartridges, I really like. Nobody ever does multicolored cartridges. Sega was like, we're going with black. Nintendo was like, great. Pretty much across their... Things. Very, so, you know, very rare exceptions. The only one I can think of off the top of my head is uh, Maximum Carnage. Right. There yeah. might have been gold cartridges of Legend of Zelda linked to the past, like but I don't know. Cases, very special cases. Uh, like Sega, Sega had the, the, their uh, virtual uh, racing game on Genesis had to be bigger because it was bigger chips. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but for the most part, you know, and, and Nintendo was a gray across Nintendo, Super Nintendo, even into Nintendo 64, they were still gray, right? Like, it's funny, just... too, because you, the... you look at the Famicom and the Super Famicom, and they're, like, red and white, kind of brightly colored. They're really eye-catching. And then over here, we got that dull gray with some purple that... I mean, anybody who's had a Super Nintendo for very long knows those things eventually turn yellow. Yeah, and, and you know, and you think about it, think about like a Game Boy cartridge in relation to a Nintendo cartridge versus the Game Boy Advance cartridge in relation to a Super Nintendo cartridge. It's almost like the same if you, you know what I mean? The Game like, Boy being like an NES, it kind of... Are you mean like, NES you mean like cartridge. capacity... Well, I mean, like, the shape and size of it. If mm. you hold up a Game Boy to a Game Boy Advance game, next to, like, the, the fairly large, about the size of a small book, an 8-bit Nintendo next to the 16-bit Super Nintendo cartridge, right? Yeah. Because they did make the Game Boy Advance cartridges a little bit smaller. They made it smaller. Uh, they're about half the size, I think. Yep, and, and Super Nintendo cartridges are smaller than Game Nintendo half, cartridges. Half the size and God knows how much bigger in terms of storage capacity because they fit insane things onto the Game Boy Advance cartridges. They really, oh, they really release. Game Boy Advance, which that's not even get into Game Boy Advance because the biggest problem with Game Boy Advance was a lot of people were playing it with that stupid game that didn't have the light-up screen on the back. Yep took a while for them to release the SP and it then it really started it's to It's still shine. popular. That thing still goes for a lot of money on uh, the aftermarket because it's it's the only way to play. Well, well why wouldn't it? It was, you know? it was essentially a mini Super Nintendo. Yeah. A lot of the games that were on the Game Boy Advance were re-releases of Super Nintendo games. Like, they re-released Final Fantasy VI. They re-released fucking Super Mario World. Link to the Past, all kinds of good stuff. And sometimes they'd even have extra shit on them. But that but, Game Boy Advance thing sucked. You couldn't see it. But yeah. You had, if it, you either had to have the light directly over it, and then it caused a glare. Yeah. There was always there was this battle between either having a glare or it not being bright enough. Yeah. It took forever. In fact, they sold packs that you could you could install a light into your Game Boy Advance. And people were able to, the early days of, of video game modding on the internet were people trying to find a way to put in light inside their Game Boy Advance, right? Yep. <laughs> and it's it's a shame, too, because, like, the Game Boy Color had already come and went, but when the SP came around and you could finally plug your 
Game Boy game Game Boy Color games into a screen that actually lit up. You finally oh, got yeah. to see yeah. like, oh my yeah. god, look at all these bright, vivid, yeah. pretty colors. But I mean, the Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, they worked on your Super Game Boy for your Super Nintendo. The Super this Game is Boy true. is an amazing thing to have. Yes, because because it plays those games differently. It really does. If you play it on the Super Nintendo, right? yeah, especially the color games reveal even more color. They, 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 like, there's like programming built in there specifically to play on the Super Nintendo. It's crazy. Yeah, I just recently started playing Pokemon Crystal again. <laughs> As I started playing it, I was just amazed. I was like, "Wow, this is just so goddamn colorful." <laughs> Secret. Oh, hold on, synchronized guys. I gotta put that on the screen so you guys can experience the awesome. Is that what I experience? <laughs> With the eh, oh, <laughs> Synchronize! And that's why I don't smoke <laughs> bongs. <laughs> oh. That right there is why I don't smoke bongs. Ooh. I don't I don't like coughing until I feel like I'm gonna shit my pants. Uh, oh, I pooped my pants a while ago. Okay. Closer to resemble. Oh, it had to. I think it had detachable controllers. Ah, uh, yeah, the, the new one. Right. The Famicom. <laughs> The Famicom didn't even have that. Those fuckers were hardwired to the console. Oh, you mean you lift the panel and then you can take them out? <clears throat> well, yeah, look, there's an empty slot for a second controller there. Look how <coughs> fucking or that's short that is. where the controllers go because. <clears throat> that could be like it. The Intellivision there, you just store them in there. <clears throat> look how fucking short that cord is, though. Yeah. Well, maybe you could pull as much more cord out and more weed if you need. A video game, but still, <laughs> the Super Set Vision saw 30 games over the course of 1984. <laughs> well, these titles like oh, Mappy looks two, all right. Mappy, Minor 2049er, and Dragon Ball will ring a bell. Dragon Some Ball? Super Dragon Ball? Even had battery backup, well, which again is something of a first with the other <coughs> for at least a few years. That's not Dragon Ball. Other one-ups on the competition included RGB... Yeah, well, I want... Show me Dragon Ball. To Europe <coughs> I want to see the Dragon Ball game. In 1985, to <coughs> a bright oh. version oh, the there we go. Woo! Woo! Oh, the pink ver... I've heard of this. I heard of this. There's a pink version made for girls. I heard of this. Where did I hear about this? Oh, I, I, was, I was thinking I was doing, like, research for, like, the rarest or, or um, <clears throat> hardest to find systems. Now, you know I, mean? I can't say for certain, mm -hmm. but I think those kind of look like they detach. But yeah. considering the family <coughs> they can come with controllers that are wrong, <coughs> and I'm oh, probably God. wrong. Least, called the Lady Cassette Vision, just for girls, or for collectors, if that's the story you're sticking to. So how did the Super Cassette Vision fare? About 300,000 units. Nice. Less than the first Cassette Vision, but impressive for going up against Nintendo. Believe it or not, the SCV has quite a homebrew community in Japan, with playable versions of Super Mario Bros., Dragon Quest, and others available to play. Pretty impressive. Hmm. Dragon Quest. One up Nintendo yet again. Dragon Quest. Maybe he misspoke. Kong, short for the Game Pocket <clears throat> computer. No, 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 no. Well, it would be the Dragon Ball game on the Nintendo though that got released over here and called Dragon Power. This is a handheld. <clears throat> it is. Look at that big beast of a handheld. That plays basically eight-bit Nintendo. Um comparable games 75 by 64 resolution man that's low well let's see it play a game boy 
Oh, it Game comes Boy. out as like a Ever Game Boy Game. game. What? Eventually, Epic did move on to other areas, wow. including trading card games and becoming a publisher for family computer games. Mocap games? They also developed mm. Barcode Battler, which again beat Nintendo's e-reader by about a decade. Oh. And in Hold on, what? They had an e-reader that came they out also before Nintendo. Barcode Battler, which again beat oh. Nintendo's e-reader by about a decade. Barcode and Battler. And what which, is yeah. the most oh. indelible mark left by Epic? Dude, you have no idea how long I've been waiting for something like that to be made for Yu-Gi-Oh, yeah. where I can actually just use my card, my real physical <laughs> cards. How hard can it possibly be to just scan a card? Right. Just use the little holograph thing in the fucking bottom right hand, the authenticity marker to determine if it's a real card. It's all you got to do. <laughs> no, 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 wait, wait, back it up a bit. Still wait, let me just see that machine that they had right there. Right there, there stop right there. Stop right there, right, right there, right there. Yeah, look at that thing. See that thing, guys? Looks like you swiped a car back, right here. Back in the day, you. they had something in Japan that was basically your smartphone, but it, it was it was it was it was like that big, right? It could do everything that your smartphone could do, but it was like the size of I don't know, like a how big would you say this? Like a VCR <laughs> tape? I would say a tape rewinder. Right, but it's not nearly pocket size. But imagine no. it was like, oh, it was a camera, but it could also like, you know, it was like a radio in there, something like, like you may, see the, what what you compare, what you could put in your pocket to what they could do, like whenever they were doing this stuff. It's just kind of mind blowing. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. <sighs> it's going it's, back. It's so, it still so runs crazy. through my yeah. mind occasionally that my phone is more powerful than my original computer was by a large margin. By about it, a it's crazy. Yeah, going back, this stuff and is really just is for nostalgia. It's just to look back and see. That was nifty. Because none of it was better. None of it was better. Nobody's arguing that that was better. <laughs> this video game, I can't possibly argue the Sega Genesis is better than just like the PC I am sitting on right now playing the games on day. I can't. <laughs> nah. No. <sighs> to this day, they're <clears throat> referred to as cassettes. Thanks in part to the cassette. Video. But all right, let's move on to the next well, one. Here, skip the next the video game. Because well, I this got one's this almost right. over. Right, right, but it, uh, you know, and it's fight. over. A little balloon fight. Balloon fight. There's our there's our big advertisement for it, the cassette vision. Oh hey. Magazine ad there with, with a nice uh that sweaty. Baseball. That's a that's nice a, sweaty. It's right? an awful sweater. Classic old school sweater in the background is classic. Very old yeah. school background on the guy. He has very nice hair. Isn't it sexy hands? I want those hands to touch me. Okay. Ah. The, what, what's the next video we got? Oops, yeah. Oh, oh, it's just going to cure. Oh, 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 here we go. All right, there it is. There it is in the box. This is our next video. This is the Casio. This is the Casio. Uh, whoa, look at this thing. Oh, look at that. Put games in there. All right. Actually, back it up. Look at the controller. The controller is funky. The PV100. Look at that controller. Isn't that funky? That's it's unusual. Reminis it's reminiscent of the original Atari. Yep, because that's what it had to play. You just need a, a button and a joystick. That's fun, right? I love the design on that. It's real nice. Like the nice shape on there, you know? Yeah. It's kind of nice. And it's, it's got Casio. A present. Wait, Wait. Does, does the video description give us a year for this thing? Uh, nope. Well, let's find out when this came out. 1983. 83. So that, yeah, that's a, that's a very, by the standards of the time, that was a very modern looking console. Yeah. All right. There's all the stuff and whatnot that came with it in the box. Oh. A pachinko UFO game. I see that's what's in the box there, right? Mm -hmm. Now we had cartridge. Okay. 
Very soon. Oh, oh, it's the old school hookups, the old school things. TVs, because a lot of those old uh, fucking boob tubes had just fucking antenna plugs in there, right? They suck, too. Yep. They never gave you a clear signal. Nope. Right on. Okay. Is it that it for that video? I think it is. Yeah, all right. So here's some more shots. I think we don't need to see it. Skip this video. Skip this video. Yeah, more shots of it. Okay, we saw, we saw it already. This thing, very obscure system showcase, right? Oh, it is obscure because this is this is a very obscure system. In fact, we can turn this down a little bit. They're just going to show us some of the games that you get on the Casio Casio system, right? We got oh, a terrible looking version of Dig Dug. Just looks awful. Just God, that looks awful. I seem to remember the Atari oh, version looking better than this. God, he can't even hit the thing he wants to hit. And look at him digging around. He's having trouble with the controller, I, obviously. He's I obviously having trouble with the controller. You can see it. I want right? to see this compared to the Dig Dug on Atari. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Because yeah. okay. I'm pretty sure it looked better. No, I'm wrong. Oh. Wow, that looks yeah, good, it looks way worse. Okay, oh, so man. this is this is a noted improvement. I'm noticing that the controller is not working very well. Just because the way he's moving around, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Now, again, I bet he won't be able to move around. He's he's inching around because the controller's not working. Okay. Anyway. Anyway, next one. Naughty boy. Naughty boy. Naughty boy. Naughty boy. Is this going to give us some two-bit porn? God, I hope so. Oh, please, I hope so. Are those blondes? What? What the hell was that? He died immediately. Oh, somebody's trying to snatch these blondes. You have to stop them from snatching the blondes. Right? Oh, wait. I don't even know. They cut away so fast, I don't even know what that game was. Wow. Okay. Anyway, wow, fuck the, peop the people playing these games suck at them. Yeah, all right, fuck this. All right, skip it. Next. Well, let's see if there's anything oh, interesting. Warp and Warp. Ugh. Warp I've played. This is not a good version of Warp. Warp is weird because you can go up and down. It's kind of weird because... And they turned it into... They called it Warp because... The walking in one direction and shooting they didn't have figured out. It's bad. So they call it Warp. I mean, it doesn't look that bad. You can at least. It, it gets what worse the more guys that are on the screen. It's Super <laughs> Cobra. Super Cobra. Ah, okay. I've seen something like this. Helicopter game. This Look, looks like guys still struggling with the terrible controller. This reminds me of another game. <coughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Reminds me of a bunch of games. You suck. <coughs> oh, Panchico. Hey, 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 Panchico UFO, that's the game that came with it. Oh my god, this is so terrible. This is the game that came with the system? That's, that's so They just trail straight to the oh, fucking... God. They barely hit anything. They just fall right into the... That's just stupid. Wow, so Sonic really was on Panchico machines, not slot machines. Yes, exactly. Amadar. Yes. Amadar. Amadar looks stupid. This is this guy is worse than the fucking irate gamer. Oh my god. I wonder if he also investigates ghosts. This is really bad. So, so we're only getting a little cross section of some of the games on this system. Tutankhamen. The Comet. Casio PV1000. I couldn't even tell what character I was supposed right, to be looking next. at. Yeah, sk skip ahead here. Get out, get out of here. Yeah, Space Panic. Who cares? This stupid uh, this is garbage. Yeah, get out of here. That looks like a Donkey Kong knockoff. All right. There, this is the Look next system that right here. Magnificent bastard. Yeah, that's the Nintendo 64. And on the other side, that's the Jaguar. And in between, yep. 
at this display that shows off all the video game systems we have. The second entry in Casio's attempt to make a video game system, one made specifically for girls. I called... like it. I like its front display. Yeah, it actually prints out stickers. Really? Yes. And see, you load it on the top where you put the sticky stuff. And it's very, you know, that, yeah. that was a bit of a gimmick at the time. You remember the Game Boy printer? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There were, there were games that fully implemented that too, like uh, Zelda. What's the Game Boy one? Link to the. No, Link's Awakening. Link's Awakening. The, color, yeah, right, right, the right. color version came with a. The ability extra, to print something to print out stickers? Yeah, you could get, like, a whole album of pictures depending on, like, events you had gotten to through the game. Yeah, And yeah. you could go to this little photo hut, and he would print it out for you. Well, see, the Game Boy printing, you know, there's certain things you could only do with the Game Boy camera. Remember the Game Boy camera? I do. With the eyeball that goes on top of it? It was specifically designed to work with the Game Boy printing. You know, yep. uh, which... But the, but, the, but, the, but the Game Boy printer that if you went somewhere and got a printout, that's one thing. But the one that they gave you at home, it worked like a receipt paper. It worked with heat. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's stupid. It didn't really work. It wasn't real ink. It just was like heated paper. It, it, was, it was stupid. I did not know that. Yeah, I, yeah. But yeah, there's that thing. There, it was like I think it was a full color printer. I think it was full color printed stickies. Yeah, and there's the things that printed out cartridges. Okay. Yeah. Blah blah blah. We can't even read it from there. All right, but that's the cartridge for the stickies, right? Okay. Here's a commercial for it. Yay! Oh, what? Oh, there they go. He's printing out stickies. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Woo! I went to get my. And she's she's do. Oh, she's making her own comic book, and she's putting it into a book. She made her own comic book. Using. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So so. Oh, you just pose the characters in the frames, and you can print out your own comic book, make your own words and stuff, full color manga. That's cool. That's. <coughs> what did, did, I like that. What's the potential of the? Uh, of the Casio Loopy. I mean, that that is kind of the, what the stuff, right? Mm -hmm. You know, print out stickers. And, well, I mean, I mean, in addition to games. I don't know. What's the games do? Oh, wait. There we well, go. Here we go. Here we go. Here's a little bit of the Casio Loopy. Here's some, what, we, what we would see. Okay. Here we go. We're going to play. Th I guess we're going to watch a little bit. See what he did. Okay. It's all in Japanese. Whatever. I know. Okay. Okay, what are we doing? We making a person? We're making a person! I don't know. Pick the hair. Pick the, uh... Oh my god. <coughs> uh, uh. Oh my god. I'm gonna skip ahead. <laughs> Wow, yeah, we're yeah, still yeah, going yeah. through hairstyles. So many there, choices a lot of for hair. To go through. I mean, come on, you you don't want to just you think, all right, this is the hairstyle I like for sure. Change of course, you color, know, but you still want to look at all the change the eyes. eyes, right? You want you want to look at all the eyes, even if, even if you like one of the eyes, you're like, I'm pretty sure that's the one I want. You still kind of want to look at the other eyes anyway, right? <laughs> hmm. Okay. Yeah. Look at all those eyes. There's so many eyes to pick from. Anyway. I can't tell if that's supposed to be an open mouth or her tongue sticking out. That is her open anime mouth. Mm. Her open toothless anime mouth. Because anime chicks don't have any teeth. That's why they give such good head, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she's wearing glasses. We're going with the glasses, huh? Okay. Um, oh, are we changing the outfit now? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
This is the... Th these... Hey guys, we are playing Japanese systems. Not just Japanese video games, but Japanese systems that were never released here in the U.S. This is what? The Casio Loopy, which was a video game system designed for girls. Like, all the games on it were made for girls. And the system itself had the ability to print out uh, little stickies and stuff. Right? Ain't that right? Yes. Yeah. Wow, this is boring. Okay, okay. Go back. Jump back. Go, go, no, no, go to the previous video. Oh. Yay! There's a commercial. Yay, commercials for it. It's a go, 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 go. For the Casio Loopy. Look at this, this for girl prints out little stickies, make little fashion. Make fashion stickies. And I guess this is what we were looking at. What? No, that's not even what we were looking at. We were looking at another game. But And that looks great. Oh, you make your own comic book. That looks great. Casio Loopy. Just didn't happen. They didn't sell it in the U.S. All right, skip to the next one after this video. Well, I just want to see if this ever goes past I don't. Creation. I don't. They, nope. We're done. That's, that's the end. Oh, Action. Oh. Yes. He... It is October 1995. The company Casio, they of the calculators, decided to release a new games console onto the market, even though their previous attempt over a decade ago failed spectacularly. But this time, mm. that's not accurate. Point. They, <laughs> they were going to release the first games console. Aimed the Casio PV-1000. That, that one didn't do well. well as you think it mm. would. Welcome to... Bum, 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 boom. The oh, my God. There's the box. There's the box it came in. Look at that motherfucking thing. See, it's, it's so much more purple than I thought it was, right? It looks like a prototype for the fucking GameCube. Dude, it, it, it's it's so much more purple than I thought it was. And it's it's... Um, the packaging, the packaging is just so crazy. We got hearts all, they were going for the hard sell for the girls. It wasn't like they were trying to make, trying to just make a system that appealed to girls, but it was like trying to make a system that like chased boys off with a stick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, come on. Right. Which is weird, because you would think something like this, like, hey, you can make your own manga with this. That would appeal to anybody, really. Right, but 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 for a boy to want to play this, they have to get past all the fucking hearts and shit all over the place. What, what there's the even, fuck? There's right? even hearts on the console. It's... If, if, it, if, if it's not... If it's not... If it's not for girls, then it's gay as hell. Yeah. The sticker. Yep, their idea was we may be able to foist a load of rubbishy games onto young girls, but we'll put in a sticker printer. Uh, a sticker printer! Yay! I'm starting right. to remember why I didn't like this guy. Alright, jump ahead. Let's see him actually print out some stickers. He actually opens up this box. Yep, yep, yep. Let's jump ahead. He's going to open up this box. Yay! There's the printer cartridge. Okay. All right. I wonder how often you had to replace the ink. I, th I think it's just the whole cartridge. Stickers and everything. Ink and everything in, in the mm. Oh. Oh, my God. And the cartridges themselves look a little bit Super Nintendo, actually. Yeah, it does look like a Super Nintendo cartridge, right? A little bit. They don't go in that bloody easily. I did notice right. that before, actually. You gotta jam them in. That's why it has the eject button. Right. Amazing. Because mm. putting them in, you gotta so, fucking like hammer it in. With, we've got, uh, okay, just just get to where he prints out a prints out a prints out a stick. There's a mouse. Oh, I Comes had a with mouse. a fucking mouse. Oh, Again. I guess. Yeah, she was I, drawing it in the commercial. She was drawing and painting. Again, things. like the Super Nintendo. Yeah. The Super Nintendo was also purplish. You know, it wasn't just gray. It was kind of purplish. You know what Wait, I mean? Wait, here we go. Here's a game. Oh. That is isn't just thing. drawing. Aw. 
The Beagle. The first game we tried was Bow Wow Puppy Love Story, the tale of a young girl who gets a pet dog for her birthday. Now the game starts with an incredible Yay. series of dialogue scenes that actually provide They say, "Hey, you don't like Ashens?" They say in the chat. No. I don't no. like English people. No, he says very plain he doesn't like Ashens cuz he's English, right? He's a colonizer. I get you. I'm Scottish. I don't like the English. <laughs> It's that my, made me realize something it, that it is my duty you hamster anime had commercial segues that looked an awful lot like Casio Lupe something. And I believe that anime came out mid, if not late 90s. So something in the anime maybe referenced the, Ca the Casio Lupe. It is my duty as someone who is descended from Scottish nobility to hate the shit out of the English, so I do it every chance I get. I hate right. film brain, too. Oh, you hate film brain. Right, right. I, I mean, got nothing really against film brain. I was going to say, to be fair, does anybody really like film brain? Do they know who that, film brain is? There's going to be that one person in the chat. I like film brain. I like film brain. I do. I like film brain. Why? Well, film brain's all right by me. Didn't wait. No, no, no. Hold the fuck on. We did a video about these people, and you said you never even watched his shit. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. But I thought he's, he's okay. He made me chuckle a bit in the suburban nights. Well, so he's okay. I'm sure he hates the English too, because the royals obviously raped his family. Right. That's what. That was the joke I made. That he looks a lot like. I mean, you said it as I was on the verge of saying it, so we were thinking the same thing. <laughs> it's a pickle! It is a pickle! Oh my god, it's a pickle! What is this that is that pickle that the Final Fantasy people would fuck up. Okay, fast forward to this. I don't want to see what's going on here. Get out of here with this. I don't... I don't... Get, this, is, this is the loopy game? Yeah. Uh, or, or, uh, I just get to the stickers. I just want to see what the sticker looks like. Wait, what All the right. fuck were those? Lemon people? Hmm. Mobile. This game looks like it gets wild, man. <laughs> oh, and here's yeah. the... Wait, oh, what, is the, oh, what is this called? I want to know what this is called. Okay. Now turn it up a little bit. Okay. Casio computer. Anime Land was a pretty simple anime system. land. You use a load of clip art pieces to make a picture of a big eyed anime character. Then you can stick text all over it and change the background and all that sort of guff. Yeah. Customization options. Pretty similar to the new Nintendo U. And of course, it actually. Hey, you guys. So what are the stickers like? Oh, hell, really, really good. Um, yeah, the thermal processor That's the old the shiny paper here does a treat. I mean, wow. Wait, wait, wait. Thermal that, process. What? It's done the same way as the printer, the Game Boy printer, I think. No, 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 because so Game Boy printers use a like special paper. The answer is really, really good. Um, yeah, the thermal process onto the old shiny paper here does a treat. And because it, it made it on shiny paper. In the middle, that mm. Because it uses a heat, heat process. Both the labels or a sticky. And the ink, to be honest with you. And you get wax based ink. Wax based ink. The page of both the labels and the ink, to be honest with you. Wax you based thermal ink. That's crazy. Are so teeny tiny That's tiny. how it gets shiny when um, it comes out. Would be what? A really fun thing for kids, genuinely. Um, genuinely. It's really nice quality stickers. Help us, she says. And her actual horror bleeds through. You know, if that's not a glowing endorsement of a sticker printer, I don't know what is. All right. Oh my god, what is he doing? Okay. You can also print um, a load of pics of animals and random objects. Kay. I think this would actually be a lot of fun for kids when coupled with a sticker printer. Sure. So, yeah, we printed... Let's <laughs> not talk too much about that. <laughs> okay, anyway, next... Next, come on. Next all right, up all right. was That's Dream good. Change, the fashion party. This, this is the Casio oh, Loopy, God. guys. This is a game for culture. girls Skip that was released. Tutorials. It was never released in the U.S. That's what we're talking about. Japanese games. I should games, probably also say that. Games Japanese like this games, continue to get made. Right. Not released in the U.S. 
three different uh, stickers out here. But at least three different settings on the contrast on the back, if you remember that. At least. So minimum contrast does give this wash out. In USA. USA, USA, not released in the US, not released in the US. Not Wait, he's got like Japanese video games not released in the US. Isn't really that fantastic. The standard one, not necessarily say perfectly good. We have Japanese games not released in the USA. Works nicely. Loopy. Look at this. That's the Casio Loopy. It makes stickies. Oh, you could adjust the level of contrast and increase the richness of the colors. Oh, nice. Oh, That's I see. Perfect, I, think. Yeah. I see. Possibly I see. Again, that one is. We're, we're, we're backing up, actually. To see the comparison. Perfectly good. Which isn't really oh! See? That was just like. Before, just just there's good. the mid tier. You'll be able to see the colors, and it all works nicely. But the maximum contrast. Maximum. It's a little bit oversaturated on the colors, but does actually give a better effect. I think possibly, again, because the, you know, the equipment has degraded wow. over time. Huh. Mm, I think having it up maximum. Oh no no no! It's just maximum. Effect. You don't want it to be retarded. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> then we took an aeroplane from Japan. Uh, <laughs> photo taken before jetting straight back to Japan the same day. <laughs> yeah, don't do this if you actually go to London. I mean, if you are like a giant, abnormally thin woman with flippers. Oh 